Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another installment of My Naked Truth with the Empress. I am the Empress. <laughs> Let me start off by saying thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate your support. Please go hit that like, share, and subscribe. Um, you know, it all helps the channel to grow, and I greatly appreciate you guys. Like, I really do. You could be anywhere in the world, but you're here with me. So I appreciate you. Make that happen. Go hit that like, share, and subscribe. Drop a comment, positive, negative. I don't really care. Just do it. Um, but tonight, I want to talk about, you know, a little bit about how I grew up spiritually and, you know, the, the, the conflict of that <laughs> as I'm sitting here rolling a joint. So side note, I didn't have no cones because I normally like to smoke out of the raw cones. So I had to roll an old school joint tonight. Like I feel like an old fogey, like. Do people really roll joints? I mean, honestly, maybe they still do because these joint papers, where they at? I got these from Jamaica when I went to Jamaica. I guess they use these out there, Lion Pride. I ain't got the grab of whatever they be putting in there because that should be giving me a headache, but I do fuck with these. They from Jamaica. That's like what I keep here when I don't have no cones. It come in clutch, so. But like, as y'all know, I was brought up pretty religious. Like, my father's a pastor. You know, my mother has always been in a church. Like, I was a PK. You know, I was the kid that had to go to choir, usher board me in after church service, sunrise service. Like I was at every church service, you know, that was my life as a child was I was in church. OK, so now, you know, fast forward to now I've learned and unlearned so many things spiritually. I will say that I appreciate, you know, the whole foundation that my parents gave me by by making me you know go to church when I was young and developing a relationship with God on my own because I will always have that you know when stuff gets too hard for me or I feel like I can't do it I pray you know I was the kid that was in college while all the other students were sitting there stressing about passing the test that once I sat down to take the test I would pray and I would ace my test even if I didn't even if I didn't feel confident in the knowledge that I knew because I knew how to give it to God so and I'm still that way. Like, you know, when life becomes too much for me, I give it to God. And all the time, you know, that works for me. But what I will say is like, I have learned a lot about, you know, spirituality and other religions and whatnot since I've been an adult. And how I feel about Christianity now is like, I believe in God, you know, I believe in Jesus, that he was a real person. What I don't agree with is how man takes the Bible and, you know, uses it and twists it to suit their narrative, to manipulate people, you know, or have power over people, kind of like slavery, you know? Um, and the funny thing is, like, all religion came from Africa. So even Christianity, you know, if you look at a lot of the symbols and you do your research, was stolen from Africa, like the cross you know, the saints and all that is that all came from Africa. So, you know, being brought up religious and then having these diverging thoughts about religion when I got older, it kind of puts me in a place of feeling like, you know, there's more, you know, and um, black people, African people are and were extremely spiritual people. Um, a lot of our religion and our beliefs and stuff got whitewashed and taken away from us when they brought us over here and enslaved us. And I have made it a mission, you know, now in my life to try to seek that knowledge of what was here first. You know, what I do know, everything started in Africa. So religion started there too. So I want to know, first of all, what did my ancestors practice? Because I have like a strong draw to like nature and the moon and like all these different things. And they ain't really talking about it in the, in the Bible like that, you know. And furthermore, like my parents is like super religious, but let's keep it real. My mom's going to hate that I say this, but my mom is an oracle. You know what I mean? She will never say she's an oracle. She probably doesn't even really know what that means if she does, but 
you know, I was brought up typical. Oh, don't do, don't listen to tarot. That's the devil. And don't do this. That's the devil and this and that. But like, when you have a mother who predicts the future, like, yes, that's a gift from God, but that's some spiritual shit. Like, I'll give y'all an example, right? True story. When I was in high school, I was doing the most dirt ever. And I would always get caught because my mom would know some shit before I did it. So prime example, I was dealing with this boy who lived up the street from me. And I was crazy about him. Like, I was literally crazy about him. I was cutting school to see him. We was having sex. Like, we, I was just crazy about him. It was like that, you know, that puppy love, that innocent love, you know, that love that just is all encompassing. I was crazy about him. So this one day I cut school, he cut school and he rode his bike down to my house and he hit his bike behind the shed in the backyard. So we in the house and we're like cuddling and like play fighting and play wrestling and all that. And I'm not thinking my parents know at all. So here come my dad walking up on the porch and 15, 16, I'm panicking like, oh my God, my dad's here. So my dumb ass, <laughs> listen, my dumb ass tried to close the door on my dad, right? My dad big as hell. Y'all know my dad, he big as hell. So I tried to close the door on him. He pushed the door open. I fell back and now he's in the house with me and my boyfriend at the time. And my dad's like, go in your room. So I go in my room. I don't know what he said to the boy but I just seen the boy getting his bike and just walking down the street all sad. Like I was never going to see him again. And, you know, after that, my dad comes in the room, he's giving me the lecture and everything. And he says to me, you know how I knew that you was here doing that today? And I'm like, how? He's like, your mom had a dream about it last night. I said, what? She said, he said, yeah, your mom told me to leave work early because she had a dream. And she told me when I came home to go look behind the shed, there would be a bike there and you would have somebody in the house. And I said, are you serious right now? And he was like, yeah. And that's not the first time my mom did some stuff like that. Like, that's not the first time. You know, uh, for y'all that know me personally, know that I have a, a, I have two brothers, but my oldest brother, um, who I'm super close with, you know, I didn't know my oldest brother until I was about 13 years old. So my brother never knew that my dad was his dad for a long time in his life. So this one day we're home and my dad gets a phone call from someone and he says, I think you're my dad. So they're going on and on, going down, running the history and people they know and this and that. And you know, my dad's like, I think he might be my son or whatever. So my mom, you know, like the night before, a couple nights before, I'm probably telling the story not accurately because it ain't my story, but from what I remember her telling me, she had had a dream and my mom dreamed about her and my dad going to this apartment. And when they walked into the apartment, there was an Oriental rug on the floor. There was a ceiling fan above the rug. There was a guy hanging from the ceiling fan uh, with a noose around his neck hanging there. And half of his face was human. Half of his face was just skeleton, like flesh and skeleton. And he kept saying, I kept, I've been hanging around here all these years and nobody ever came to see about me. He just kept repeating that, repeating that. And she said it was just such an eerie dream. Fast forward to my dad and my mom going to see this man to see if this man is, is indeed my dad's son. They walk into the apartment, same oriental rug, same ceiling fan, and the man's face was my brother. So that's how my dad knew that's my son. They didn't need no fucking DNA test. Like my mom oracled that shit. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? So like... For me, I know that God and spirit and universe and ancestors and angels, like I feel and I know that all of those entities and deities work together for our greater good and our gifts, you know, are given to us by that whole. That's what I feel. And, you know, my mother is a devout Christian. And she will never be able to see things from my perspective as far as spirituality is concerned. And I respect her and I respect what she believes. You know, I don't really get into conversations with my parents about what I believe. I do believe in God. I pray to God, you know, um, 
but I have an expansive view of spirituality. And I feel like it just adds to me as a person. And, you know, people say, well, if you know all this stuff, like, why don't you try to tell your parents? Like, why don't you try to tell, you know, your parents about what you've learned spiritually and stuff? And I said, you know, at this point in my life, at this point in their lives, my parents are in their 70s and eight, almost 80s, okay? They have rested their foundation in Christianity, and that is what they have built their lives on, and that is what they believe, and they are happy and comforted and, and, and love that. I have no desire to come in and rock the boat, so to speak, um, of their spirituality, even if, even if I feel like I've learned, you know, and I may know things that they don't know, truths that they might not know. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, um, it's not up to us to go out here and beat people in the head with our spirituality. And I don't feel like anybody should do that. I feel like you should let your light shine. And if somebody asks you about what you believe, then that's your opportunity to present to them what you believe and what you feel and share your light and share your spirituality with them. Um, but yeah, it was just something that I was thinking about my mom and all the time she predicted shit. You know, my mom predicted so many things. I, I got, I was, I was, I was grounded for like the whole year of 95. Like, I don't know movies that came out that year. Like, I don't know music that came out that year. Like, I was grounded. Like, I was just out of control wild. And she predicted a lot of my wild shit. She did. She couldn't predict everything, but she predicted a lot of it. So I say all that to say, spirituality is like a, something different. It's, it's something different for everyone. Respect each other's, you know, spirituality. Don't judge people for what they believe. And when it's all said and done, if it works for you, it works for you. Okay? And that is my naked truth. If you like this show, you want to see more content like this, go hit that like, share, and subscribe. And I'll be sure to keep it coming. Bye!